what they go do with me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear in the crowd. Chest shot, we aiming for heads too. Grease and the I got through the check too. EBK, we don't fuck with them niggas. If you jacking them, duck with them niggas. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And today, who we got in the building? All right, well, <laughs> we got Maury Briscoe in the building. Mr. Most Consistent, congratulations on your award. Thank you, thank you. How do you feel? Like, is this your first, first award? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I just feel like for the longest, I ain't began my flowers, you feel me? For, like, the shit that I do, like, I bring a lot to the table, mm -hmm. and a lot of niggas don't really see that, you feel me? So I appreciate y'all for seeing that and giving me the award. Of course, congratulations. So how did you how did you manage to stay so consistent? I mean, even like 2020 leading into 2021, it wasn't only like a 2020. Staying in the stool. Like, niggas go to the stool like every other day, so it's an everyday thing. And after we do the songs, niggas is ready to shoot vids the next day, probably the same night. So. So when you put music out, is it songs that you keep in the tuck? Or is it literally like what you said? Like y'all uh, make the A couple though. Like a couple songs, like I look at it and be like, nah, that's not like a hundred K worthy, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. Every song that I wanna put out, like I feel like it gotta be a hit, like or it gotta sound like this is it, you feel me? Mm hmm So what to you classifies as a hit? I say lyricism, like in the flows. Like I don't like a lot of my songs to sound repetitive. Me. So if my songs are sounding the same, mm -hmm. I'm gonna choose like which one sounds the best out of which ones are sounding alike and drop one and do the other way. You drop your music through like other YouTube accounts. Yeah. You don't have one. Why is that? I just made one recently though. I made a um a, a Vivo account. So right now if you go on YouTube and search up um Roy Briscoe Vivo, you can subscribe and start dropping videos on there. And like every now and then I'll probably drop a video on Rap Consoles. Okay. So what was the reason for it before? I just never seen myself like dropping on my own channel because it was mad work. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, <laughs> ass. Like I felt like in order to get paid off YouTube, for me, it's certain requirements. So I was like, what would be the point of me setting it up if I'm not gonna reach the requirements? You feel me? Like I know it was saying about a certain amount of watch time, subscribers, and shit. And mm -hmm. like the first page I made didn't have subscribers like that. So I was like, it's whatever. I'm gonna just drop on this other page. Started dropping on their channel, and getting views. So mm -hmm. I was like, might as well keep it. Keep it going the same way. But you weren't seeing anything from those YouTube views though, like nah. monetarily, right? No. Nah. So what like, do you when I see when I see money from music it comes from streams, like audio. Mm -hmm. It's like when I put out my albums and shit on all platforms, that's when I get my, my breath back. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is more important, the streams or the views? The streams is important like money wise, but the views like for people to like recognize you for me and attention and shit, that's more important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's backtrack a little bit. Um, so growing up, you're from Brooklyn. Yeah. What was what was your life like growing up? I was a ball player, so like I had a, like athletic life, mm -hmm. just playing ball, going to practice, coming home, ball game. For me, regular like shit. So at what point did you decide that you wanted to make music? When I got benched, I got benched for a whole <laughs> season in my um my freshman year. So my freshman year, they fucked a lot up for me. When I got benched, I got suspended from my school too. So it was like, I wasn't really in the mood for anything else. Mm -hmm. I just got bored, got on my computer one day and started doing music. So do you, would you say like it happened for a reason? Like what, you was getting in trouble? That's why you was benched? Yeah. I got suspended because some, some other shit that happened in school, like behavior wise and shit. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, because I heard in the song, you was like from 13, you was outside. So yeah. you like, been getting into that shit. And, and like... When I say in terms of being outside, like, just, like, being, like, around shit, you feel me? Mm. So, like, I'm not saying, like, 13, I was running around killing niggas and shit like that. <laughs> okay, so would you say, though, that that contributed to, like, why you were benched and why you started making your music? Yeah, the fact that you were exposed that. to that? Yeah. So who were you listening to back then? Like, the people, like, our children around, people from my, my neighborhood, like Nick Blicky, Envy King, Nas Blicky, Tutu G. So you was already listening to the drill yeah. shit. Do you think that if they weren't your friends that you would have tapped into the drill shit? Honestly, I probably still would have ended up doing it because, like, growing up, I was listening to, like, Chicago drill music. Mm. So, like, when that shit caught my attention, I'm like, nah, this shit is it. Like, I mm -hmm. didn't really listen to no other type of music after that. Who was you listening to, like, Chief Keef? Nah, 
niggas like FBG Duck. Okay. Um, Duck, Luka, King Lil J, even I ain't gonna lie. So when you started making your music and it started picking up, like, what was that like? Was it expected or? Nah, I ain't expected at all. I ain't gonna lie to you. Cause for the longest, it was like I wasn't getting no attention. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Well, I felt like I wasn't getting no attention. And then just out of nowhere, one day it was just like everybody paying attention to this one kid now. So what song would you say was like the one that did it? Mm, I say either on go or on my split, like because that was at that time it was like a controversial ass song. Mm-hmm. Cause I know um, what's this nigga name? Forgot her name. I dropped the GDK. No, I'm lying. It was Folk in the Trunk. Mm. When he dropped that, I remixed the beat and did the Wool My Split song. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what are your thoughts on like? the whole like you know dish tracks and all of that like what what are your thoughts on it i'm gonna we'll start there i just want your general your general like, opinion as in what like why do people make this tracks why do people make why do you make this tracks i just respond like it's a lot of people that like feel the need to mention me or, or my friends and shit you feel me so i just respond and tell my side of shit okay so you never initiate i wouldn't say that no so when you're making a diss track do you feel like there's limits to like what you could talk about or is anything on the table like anything is on the table like because it's like boom you see if a nigga will go and mention somebody man's in the song mm-hmm. that passed away or whatever that's like you crossing a line like you you saying you wanted to go there in this music shit so mm-hmm. it's gonna go the same way when i'm drop my music mm-hmm so you just said something. I don't know if you said it on purpose, but you said you wanted to go there in this music shit. So, is this like is the diss stuff music or is oh, it music really nice? and entertainment? Because you see okay. everybody like it. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. like the controversy, so it's entertainment for y'all. Okay, so outside of the booth, it's not really as bad as it seems. Nah, not at all. I mean, like majority of these niggas don't even be knowing each other in real life. You feel me? So it's like we ain't gonna see each other. This shit ain't real. Mm-hmm. But like out of curiosity, like what does it take for somebody to like talk about you in a diss track? Like and to be honest, a lot of people like have secret animosity. Like, mm. I wouldn't say certain names, but like it'd be people that are they'll fuck with you for a certain amount of time, and then out of the blue, you see like all the hatred coming out of nowhere. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like they will start saying shit that they never would have said before. Me, yeah, I was cool, and now it's animosity that's coming out in the open. Mm-hmm. And has there ever been a time where that's happened with somebody that you were like cool with, like you really thought that you was cool? Yeah, with? definitely. A couple times, a lot, a lot. So I mean, a lot of it though comes with how do you? Nineteen. So it comes with age because you're growing up and you know you're getting older in this industry, learning stuff. What would you say is one of the biggest like takeaways that you've learned so far? Like as in what? As an artist, like in terms of the industry, how it works. Like. One thing I realized is like once you sign a contract, like you no longer own your music. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So like that's one thing like I'm gonna try to stay away from because like I see a lot of rappers like getting restricted from dropping music when they want, getting paid off their music. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be in that situation at all. You feel me? Like I deserve the type of like with the recognition and shit that I have mm-hmm. and the streams I'm making. I deserve to have my bread when I want it. You feel mm-hmm. me? Yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to able to control when I could get my money off of my music, my hard work, you feel me? So what I'm hearing is kind of like you like to take the independent route for as long as possible? Yeah, you could say that. So are there any labels that you would consider signing, though? Um, Rock Nation. You could say that, Rock Nation. And what would it take for, so like what is it about Rock Nation, for example, that interests you? I see like a lot of rappers like, they consistently come after, like, specific labels. Like, I'm not going to say the names, but it's a couple of labels I always see people posting about. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't ever see Rock Nation in the mix of that shit, so. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, taking it back to the music, like, what do you think, like, how would you say that the drill scene is, like, doing right now? Do you think that it's something that's going to stay consistent? Yeah, because right now, it's looking like how... 2016 was looking like with the whole big ops and then the blickies going out of the music shit you feel me so mm-hmm. right now that's what, what it's looking like with this whole brooklyn shit and people saying they they going against what the bronx is doing you feel me? 
But how do you how what do you think about like how do you what are your thoughts like, on the Bronx? I feel like this shit going go a long way for everybody that's really doing something with their music. You feel me? Like if you staying consistent, and you focus with it, you got everybody attention right now, so mm-hmm. you should be able to be good. So do you think that the Bronx is doing anything different, whether it's bad or good, um, than Brooklyn niggas was doing when they had? Only the thing I could really say is like majority of them just have a lot of like energy and they, they they videos and they need music you feel me like mm-hmm. it'd be unheard of energy mm-hmm. not let me not say unheard of because like it's a lot of people like that took a flow from brooklyn niggas like freshy the general like he had a raspy voice type of flow and like it's like everybody in the bronx trying to create their own sound with that now okay okay so what about when it comes to support do you feel like the support of like the niggas in the bronx matches how it was in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? I mean, I can't really say that because, like, I don't know how it is on their side. Okay. I, mean, I don't That's really fair. know, like, a lot of niggas from the Bronx to really say that. But for Brooklyn part, Brooklyn part of it, like, it'd be a lot of niggas that hate. Like, a lot of niggas want to support their own mans. They're going to support a nigga from the Bronx before Brooklyn. Mm. You me? Have you noticed that? Yeah, a lot. Yeah? A lot. So, I mean, like, Tutu, for example, like, do you feel like when he performed at Rolling Loud or, like, when he was, like, he got put on and, you know, niggas from Brooklyn was getting put on, do you think that that helped at all? Yeah. Yeah? Did he do anything, like, that specifically that you could say, like, he was, like, helping put y'all on? Like, me, for example, like, I never performed before, but I opened up for him at a um, a performance in Rhode Island in, like, October. Mm, Okay. And how was that? Nah, shit was lit. I ain't gonna lie. It was lit. I was packed. I ain't. I didn't really expect people to like even know who I was out there. But like, a couple of the songs came on and they was jacking it. Like everybody knew the song. So you like performing? Yeah. What is it about performing that you like? Like the feedback. Like when I see the crowd is like, they active. Like how I'm active, Mm -hmm. and I'm feeling it. So what what do people like usually say when they hear your music? Like what's the feedback that you usually get? A lot of people like see. I'm like too laid back with shit, you feel me? But like that's just how I am. Like, mm-hmm. I can't really, I can't change that. Like I could, but I'd rather not, you feel me? Because I'm not a nigga that's gonna fake my name, for me. I'm gonna be myself. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's, okay. So do you feel like when it comes to the music stuff, like do you do it to be in the spotlight or do you do it because you genuinely like to make I don't music? Like, I don't really care about like the spotlight shit at all. Like the whole goal for this music shit with me right now is like mm-hmm. to get out of where I'm at. Position I'm in, being in Brooklyn, like I don't want to be in Brooklyn the rest of my life. I'm trying to live in the hills, fancy hot, big ass crib in Cali, probably. Mm-hmm. So I don't really care about the spotlight shit. But if the spotlight gonna bring the money with it, then of course. Okay, so when you get up or to the the hills in Cali and stuff like that, will you still be making music? Of course. Like, yeah. I like music. Like I love music since I was young. I always loved music. So the music shit is like always gonna be there regardless if I'm rich or not. Mm-hmm. I don't even plan on retiring. So you're just going to keep making music for as long as you can? True say, I might sound wild for this, but like I want to be a nigga that's like 63 and still rapping. Like, <laughs> and I, like you never hear no shit like that. Like, yeah, that's my grandpa. <laughs> like, were you ever heard of a nigga with a big ass chain, music video in a lamb truck and shit like that? Uh-huh. So I'm going to do some shit like that. So do you think that you would still stay within that drill area, or do you feel like uh, by the end it's going to be? Probably by the end, that's the <laughs> types of played out. Nobody even going to hit that shit. Right. So what, where else do you see yourself, though, in terms of, like, the music that you made? I see myself going far, real far. I mean, everybody else. Well, I say that to say, like, you, I mean, you are versatile. I would say, like, you have, you know, a few different tracks. We're going to get into that in a bit. But, like, where else would you see yourself if you're not going to be making drill down the line, like, what markets do you think you could tap into? Mm, you know what's crazy? Somebody was telling me I should make a dance or song. I was about <laughs> some shit like that. And would you consider it? I would. Like, I try different shit all the time when it comes to music, so, like, why not? But if it sounds crazy, I'm not doing nothing with it. That's just going to be a throwaway. Are you Caribbean? Yeah. Where are you Jamaican. from? Jamaican. Jamaican. Okay, so it's in your blood. So, would you put somebody on a track? Mm. You do by yourself? Nah, I'll do it dolly. Cause like, if my f- but like if somebody come on the track and walk on me, cause I ain't know what I was doing on that type of beat, I'ma feel it. Like, so I'm good. I'm gonna do it by myself. So in general, even with the songs you got out now, has there ever been a time that you felt like you was on the track with somebody and they like 
walked on you a couple track. times. Yeah. Like, I did a track with Coca. I felt like if him sending me to open, like if he sent me to open, I could have did better. Mm -hmm. Like the shit just turned a whole different way. Like when he seen like I was walking, he said, "Nah, I'm going back to the stool." Ah, he he verse on it. So what? And what was the feedback on that? Like, was people talking about it? Yeah, everybody. Like a couple of people was like, "How you just dropped the song with Coca, and then you you you, you shooting videos in in Brownsville for me because it was people making politics about niggas not fucking with Coca, but like." It was never it was never the case you feel me it's just mm -hmm. a bunch of politics that come from social media mm -hmm. i mean yeah social media does play a really big part in a lot of the shit that's going on so i mean since we're on the topic of social media anyway i i'll say the way that you handled the i saw the live with yeah. c blue the way that you handled that situation was like, very mature that whole picking up the phone and screaming at your phone shit is dumb like that shit is kid shit like the shit that i used to do mm -hmm. so, like, I, I matured from that so i stayed away from like that. So like when I see someone to come on the live, let him join. When mm -hmm. he talk, when he talk, we just gonna talk. Like, and I really wanted to see where some mom was at. Like, why? Like, where did this come from? You feel me? Like, uh -huh. he just asked me for a feature, and then out of nowhere, him and everybody else, each other was against us. Now, you feel me? Right. So, what were your thoughts coming out of that live? Like, did you when get? I what came you... off that live. It's just like it clicked in my head. Like, niggas really just is. They fans at the end of the day, they fans. Like, mm. You can't come from wanting to do something with a nigga to just say, fuck this nigga. We don't like what they're doing. Like, if you heard the lot, if he said, we just GDK because we don't like folk niggas. Mm -hmm. If you don't like folk niggas, why did you want to do a song with me in the, for me in the first place? Mm -hmm. Like, how you, your mindset just switched so fast? Like, I'm still the same person I was when you wanted to feature. What's right. the difference? Right. Now, do you feel like. The whole politics shit kind of stops, like, some good music from being made. Like, do it you? Do. Yeah. No, I do. Would you ever make a song with one of your ops? Nah. <laughs> Even if y'all don't record in the same booth? Nah, I don't know. Good off that. Do you feel like if you would have, like, accepted the offer to be on the track that things might have been a little different? Probably. You never know, because if I would have did a track with him, we would have had a Bronx link. Like, for me, it would have been somebody... From the Bronx that's making music and getting views, mm -hmm. with somebody from Brooklyn that's making music and getting views. When you see shit like that, it's like good chemistry. So right. now both of us will get benefits out of it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. hmm. So in general, like the niggas that you make music with, are those your friends? Are those business relationships? Yeah, majority, majority people like that I grew up with and shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will say though, like one of the positives you already spoke about like who you were growing up with and a lot of your collabs go up yeah. a lot of them do i know like one of the top songs that you have um on your apple music is the song you got with nas bookie yeah. well one of the songs you got with nas bookie which is dope so how did that come about like how do y'all decide when y'all want to hop on the track together i ain't gonna lie like i don't know if y'all noticed or not but like nas like he wasn't dropping a lot of music lately so when he came to my crib one day he's just like be looking at my videos and be like, nah, I ain't gonna lie, like you really going up. We gotta start doing music again and take this shit back over. So mm -hmm. we did a track, mm -hmm. wrote this shit in the school and just knocked it out. Mm -hmm. And this is just a quick sidebar. Like we, of course, see everything that's on social media right now in terms of his condition. You don't have to give too much information, but have you spoken to him? Like, Yeah, everything good right now. That's why like, I tried to stop a lot of the blogs, like texting a couple bloggers, like before this shit really got public. I'm mm -hmm. telling them like, yo, all that info is full. Stop spreading that. But, like, you know, niggas going to listen to what they see on the media. Right. And how does it feel to see? Because I'm not naming any names, but, like, you know, a lot of niggas have been, like, posting it and trying to, like, be funny yeah. and say, how like, does that? don't pay that shit no mind. Like, you just look at them like, you're goofy. Like, you're posting shit that you don't know anything about. Like, you have no information on. So. Mm. But on the other side, would you do the same thing? Nah, like, I don't even, like, make jokes on, on social media about niggas when Ah, like that shit is just not according to me. Mm -hmm. You keep that song, that stuff in in the music. Yeah. So that was just a quick little segue. But back to what we were saying. So when it comes to the collaborations, you did a song with um, what's her name? It starts with a Z. Um, Zeffy Lee. Zeffy, yes. Yeah. How did that link up come about? Uh, she's somebody that I knew, so she wanted to do music and shit. And I seen she was really starting to take it serious, so like. Going to the store a lot. Mm -hmm. We was in the studio one day, and I told her just get on the song with me. We mm -hmm. did it there one time. 
shot the video like three, four days after. That was it. Okay, so post don't miss. Is there any other like female artists that you would like to work with? It's a couple like that I did already. Like I don't really pay attention to a lot of like the females other than the ones that like would personally hit me up or like ones that I know that rap. But mm-hmm. ones that I work with is like Swinderella, Lee Bands, um, Zephy. Mm-hmm. There's probably a couple more I can name, like Julia. Mm-hmm. But there's nobody that's like outside of people you know that you've just seen on social media or something that you would like to work with. I can't really think of one off the top of the head. Okay. All right. Well, you brought up Swinderella, and I saw her in your video for Aaliyah, Mm -hmm. but she didn't have no verses or nothing on that. She was just like in it. So, what was that about? Like, you just wanted her to. That's my friend for me. So, she just pulled up and did it for me like a, like a favor type shit. Okay, video was nice. The Thank song you. was nice. So like the love song thing, like the melodic stuff, like you fucking with it. Yeah, I like that route a lot though. Like more than the drill shit, but like niggas like the drill shit more. So like that's what I'm gonna keep pushing out. Mhm. So at what point does it get to like you making what you really want to make if that's what you like? When it's actually start working for me. Mm. Like when I post a love song, if it could do the same amount that I could do in the drill, mm-hmm. the drill video in the day, then. I'll start posting more love songs. And what inspires your love songs? You just like... Ooh. Situations. Situation? Yeah. So what inspired Aaliyah? Situation. Like a current situation? <laughs> <laughs> a current... You got somebody? Maybe. Oh. What is that like, though? Like, dating while you going up and, like, you got all eyes on you. Like, you got to be careful, like. It's a lot of females that, like, they want what they see you can have. So, like, I got to, like, really know your character before I really even try to fuck with you. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that's solid. So, I saw that Instagram took your took your account down 28K. That's crazy. Shit hurt. I'm at five right now, though. I'm back at five. Right. So, why why they, why they deleted your shit? Because bullying, supposedly. But I ain't bullying nobody. They've been coming after everybody, though. Yeah, I see a lot of people page got taken out. Like, Swinderella page got taken out at mm. 28K. Damn. So, like, you building it. So, how, how have you been getting, like, your page back up? I just keep posting reels. Like, mm. when I'm about to drop a video, it's just like, fuck it. Like, I still got to p- promote my shit so many. So, like, I'm going to just post it anyway. Mm. A lot of people started tapping in from, like, the first night when it got deleted. So, like, a lot of people seen, like, yeah, this is the real page that you got now. Mm-hmm. Promoted it for me. Okay. So do you feel like Instagram is like a good marketing tool? No, nah, definitely. Like before, I used to think like Facebook was really it, but like nah, Instagram is way better. Like as people that are tapping with you from across the country, mm-hmm. Facebook, you're not going to see that. If you see that, you're probably going to think it's a fake page. Right. Has there ever been a time that anything was like posted on the internet that you wish like, maybe I wish we didn't have this right now? Facts. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? A lot. A lot. Okay, well, I got you on the couch. I can't not ask. I know you know it's coming, but I can't not ask. So there's a video that's circulating of you when it looks like you were like younger. Yeah. And I was copying a nigga, bro. Respectfully. Like, I was just, how would I say it? Trolling. Trolling? Was that a vine? Like, what was that? Bro, not even a vine. Like, it was a whole nother little nigga that made a video doing some shit like that. And I copied it, trying to be funny. Regular bozo kid shit. So how is it that like niggas got it? Because it was on one of my old pages. I guess somebody like really took the time out they did to worry about me, mm-hmm. look through my shits, and happen to see it. Cause I thought it got leaked. Cause yeah. I saw a video of you like on Facetime. I think it was like with a girl or something. She's like, "You mad, doggy?" Yeah. So what was that about? If that wasn't related, that was something else. Nah, she just she hacked my page one day, and I posted a picture of us. So she posted a picture of us, you know, like, we don't have no relations anymore. It made it seem like she's my girlfriend. So, like, mm. she, like that get me aggravated. So, mm. I got aggravated. But if you really watch the video, you can see, like, I'm smirking, I'm laughing. I wasn't, like, crying or nothing. Like, I'm just tight, aggravated. But she, when she starts saying that you mad shit, like, I'm laughing with her now. Mm-hmm. So, that was really it. Y'all still cool. <laughs> okay. So, um... 
So, all right. So, 2022, what do you see, like, happening this year? What What do you got planned for the year? Right now, I see a big-ass contract. That's really? Definitely. Because, like, if you're really paying attention to the drill scene, you're seeing a lot of these rappers just crashing out. Like, niggas is either going to jail or they dying. So, it's like, I'm staying out the way from both. So, mm. I know I'm going to prevail in that one point in time, like they don't. You ever seen a post on, on Instagram or on Facebook? And they be like, "Y'all killing all the good rappers." Oh so yeah. Y'all gonna have to listen to me. Like that's how I'm feeling right now. Uh uh-uh. oh. Okay. Well. Um. All right. So contract. You were just saying like you wanted to stay independent for as long as possible. Like yeah, facts. But like if the price is right, the the the, the rights is right, mm-hmm. then I'll go along with it. You feel me? Okay. Okay. You got any projects in the works? Anything? I'm thinking about dropping a little EP for Valentine's Day. A lot of people are telling me I should get back on my love side. Yeah, we were just talking about that. You definitely should. And Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So yep. that's something that you got to be already working on. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, okay. So if you had to list, like, I know I asked you about women, but if you had to list, like, some collabs that you would like to see in the works, mm-hmm. who would you name? If you had to pick five, who would you name? Like anybody in the industry, or like people it like be, it could be towns. upcoming or mainstream. Um, like use G's. Um, I could say Freshy the General. Like it, I know a lot of people be asking me, like, why you don't got a track with Freshy? Why you got a track? Like niggas be busy. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people like don't even go to the stool like that no more. You feel me? Because they got other shit going on. Mm-hmm. But like that's gonna come in the works for sure. Um. It's a lot, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot of people I want to work with because I'm a, I'm a nigga that like to expand. You feel me? So like anybody from Chicago, Florida, all type of shit. So what's one like out of the box artist that you were like who's not like, like on from, the drug yeah, scene? All. Yeah. Um, I heard of somebody called Juvenile Baby. I've been listening to him a lot lately. He's from Florida. Like, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, well, is are there any, like, words of advice that you would like to share to any upcoming mm-hmm. artists who may be watching this? I mean, the most I could say, like, uh, do your music, stay out the way, don't crash out. So, yeah. Don't crash out? What that mean? Crashing out is, like, <laughs> you throwing your life away. You okay. Me? And a lot of music is out here doing that right now. And you got this rap shit in the headlock, supposedly. Mm. Okay. All right, well, shout out your Instagram, your handles, yes, all of that. Yes, please get my new gram back to 30K, <laughs> not even 28. The real dot Mori Blick. B L I X K. Because a lot of y'all be putting C.